Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Term to discuss further into Cauchy's mean value theorem, and now look at a visual proof, or basically a visualization of the theorem. If you recall from my earlier videos, I went over Cauchy's mean value theorem and its proof, but I did not go over a graphical representation of that proof or of the theorem. And you can see that video in my earlier video in, my, in the video links below in the description. And in fact, uh, this was brought up by uh, someone commented on YouTube about this a couple days ago. So I thought might as well go over a visual uh, proof of that uh, theorem. So basically, first thing, let's recall the Cauchy's mean value theorem. If we're given the following conditions, f of x and g of x are continuous on the interval a and b. That's a closed interval. So that means includes a and b, and differentiable, uh, differentiable. Yeah, I just fix that type of differentiable, not differential. On a and b, uh, this is open bracket, meaning um, it doesn't have to include a and b. So basically, this is saying it's continuous from a to b, including them, but the derivative you know, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to exist at the endpoints like that. And you can learn more about this closed and open intervals in my early videos. I put a link uh, of that in the video description below. And also, we're, uh, we're given that the, the following condition g prime of x, or the derivative of x not equal to 0 for all x in this open interval a and b, again, ignoring uh, the, end, the end points a and b. And also, g of a is not equal to g of b. Then there exists a number in A uh, where C is greater than A less than B. So again, that's why we have this differentiable. It doesn't have to actually exist. Um, and the, the, the derivative doesn't actually have to exist at the endpoints because the C is in between these two. Such that what we have is the derivative F prime of C divided by G prime of C is equal to F of B minus F of A divided by G of B minus g of a and again this is these two can't equal each other otherwise we're going to have a divide by zero so this is just a recap on the Cauchy's mean value theorem and now this is also known as the general mean value theorem the Lagrange's mean value theorem is just a simple cage of the uh, Cauchy's MFT or mean value theorem for sure uh, this is just for short MFT uh, basically this is a simple case where we have, and I went over this before, and I went over a visual proof of this one, but not of the general. So recall that this is if g of x is equal to x, so equals this function x, then what we have also is g prime of, uh, of b is equal to b, g prime of a equals to a. So this is just the general, I mean the uh, simplified, where we have this case, and then when we take the derivative of this function, like that is because uh, yeah, this one, g prime of x, this just equals to 1 because the derivative of x is just 1. So also here, yeah, these ones, if you just plug in b, you just get uh, b. Is it, g of uh, x is just b. So we have that. So what we end up having is this g prime of c goes becomes 1, and then this becomes just b minus a. So what we end up having is f prime of c is equal to f prime of b minus f prime of a and now the g of x is just x so when we plug in b that's just b minus a so this is the simplified mean value theorem and uh, yeah this uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem is just simply known as the uh, mean value theorem that's just way more common and uh, in my early videos, I went over a visual proof of the MFT, but I did not go over a visual proof of Cauchy's mean value theorem. And uh, basically, recall that the simple MFT can be visualized as follows. And I'm going to go over this visual visualization of this simple case just to show you how it aligns pretty, uh, pretty well with the Cauchy's mean value theorem. Just the only difference is the axis will change. So what we have, we have a function, I mean, if we have a graph like this, uh, y, x, and let's say we had a, um, yeah, a graph like this, where this is y equals 2 f of x. So let's say we have a value here, this is at a, and then this is at b. Let's take a range like that. So then at this point right across here, we have f of a, and then at this point, we have f of b, 
like that. So now what this means visually, or the theorem visually, is if we were to take, let's say this average slope, just draw a line from here to here, uh, and then what we end up having is a right angle triangle like that, what we get is a rise over run. So we have a line from here to here, I'll just draw this straight like that, a bit better. So the run is, is just B minus A. So what we have here is, this is considered the average slope. Let's write that average slope, and this equals to just rise over run. I'll write that in red, and the rise is just the difference f of b minus f of a. So f of b minus f of a, and then this is divided by the run, which is just b minus a. So that's what the average slope is, but what this theorem states is that there is a number c in between a and b such that the derivative of it is equal to the average slope. In other words, you can look at this visually and see that there, there must exist yeah, a number C. I'm going to write this in blue. So if you were to just look at this chart to see what the instantaneous slope is, if you go here, it's going to be something like this. But uh, And then as you go closer and closer, you're going to get something more aligned with the average slope. It's going to erase this. Oops. And then until we get to some number C, I'm going to draw this all the way down here. This is a random, uh, I mean, it's a number C, somewhere there in between A and B, that this slope, so if we take the slope right here, draw this a bit more aligned, just try it parallel. So in other words, at this number here, we have this slope which is parallel to this one. In other words, it is the exact same slope. So then this has a f of c like that. That The slope of that is the derivative at that c value. In other words, this average slope is equal to f prime of c. So this is the visualization of the mean value theorem. So a sum number in between, the derivative is the same as the average slope. So yeah, this is the uh, basic visualization of the simple theorem, but now the Cauchy's mean value theorem, in fact, it can be visualized in the same way, but the horizontal axis is g of x. And in my last video, I did a um, video on how the instantaneous slope will change or the derivative will change when you change this x uh, horizontal axis into more general g of x function. So make sure to watch that because I'll use that uh, into this video as well. So let's let's begin to do that. So let's draw an x and y uh, coordinate system except instead of x and y we have the horizontal one will write g of x, the vertical one will write this as f of x right here. So when we have something like this and when we, when we plot these points and what I'm going to do is start off at Let's say we have at this point here, this is when we have x equals to a. So what we'll have is g of a instead of uh, instead of just a, uh, instead of x equals a. So when x equals a, we have this function is going to be g of a. And let's say we have something over here where this is g of b. Now these are both continuous, and when we plot these, uh, when we just get a bunch of x values and see how these plot. You might get something that looks like this. This is just a just a general case. I'll draw this a bit better. So notice that it could be something like this. So you could just have a random function based on what these are. So fx could be x cubed. This could be x squared plus 3. Just random uh, different values. So let's say we have something that looks like this. And then at this point right here, this is going to be our f of uh, a. And at this point right here, because this is when g one x is b we have g of b and then at this point all the way across here we get g i mean f of b like that yeah so now the only difference is that the coordinate system is changed into a more general function of x as opposed to strictly x and now what we do is do the exact same methodology we'll draw a line from here to here so again, we'll have a rise over run, rise over run. So then this slope right here could be considered as, I'll just write this again as a average slope. I'll just write this 
in quotation marks just because it, it's, it's based on a different coordinate system. I'll just remove this. So average slope here is equal to the rise over the run, uh, where rise now is again difference between f of b and f of a. f of b minus f of a, all divided by, now we have the run, which is just g of b minus g of a, like that. So that's an average slope. And now when we look at this, there needs to be a number c such that this instantaneous slope is the same as this average slope. And in fact, you could see that there is. Yeah, so now I'll draw one in blue. So if we just look at this graph, you could see that there must be a number uh, c such that it's going to be exactly parallel to this one. So I'll draw something that I think is roughly parallel. So like that, so then this line has to be parallel to this. And at this very point right here, draw this all the way down. This is, this is the number in between A and B. We'll call this G of C right there. So the number C, when you plug in, in this horizontal uh, function, G of X is gonna be G of C. And then on the left side, we get a value here of F of C right here, F of C. And now this slope, this slope right here is the instantaneous slope, and I went over the proof of this in my earlier video. This is just the instantaneous slope when you have a different function instead of x, a more general one. This is gonna be equal to f prime of c, in this case, because the value is c, divided by g prime of c. So that's what the slope is, or the derivative. So then this has to equal to this one. Again, make sure to watch my earlier video on this. So what this is saying is that there must be a number c in between a and b such that at this very point right here the derivative or the instantaneous slope is equal to the average slope. So there must be a point c such that this equals to f of c, I mean f prime of c divided by g prime of c. Yeah, so basically this is the visualization of that, uh, based of the Cauchy's mean value theorem. And also I want to reiterate and write it down here. In my last video, I went over a more general definition of derivative for when the horizontal axis is a general function of x as opposed to strictly x. And uh, so in that case, g of x, like this one. So make sure to watch that video to show that it's equal to the instantaneous slope or the derivative in quotation mark is equal to the f prime of x divided by g prime of x. And I'll go to that right here. Here's a, this was just a little preview of my last video. So the same idea, when we change it, we're gonna, the proof shows that this instantaneous slope is f prime of x divided by g prime of x. When we have the coordinate system changed, as opposed to if it's just x, then the definition derivative is just gonna be f prime of x like that and as opposed to this one's gonna be f prime of x divided by g prime of x. Let's go back to here. So yeah, that's uh, all for today. Hopefully uh, I understand how this visualization of the Cauchy's mean value theorem is. And it's pretty much the exact same thing here, but again, the horizontal axis is more general and not just x. And it's the same thing. There's gotta be a, a, num I mean, a number in between such that the slope is the same as the average slope. Same thing here. There's a number here such that the slope is the same as the average slope. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you'll learn from this very interesting video on, on the mean value theorem and uh, visual visualize, visualizing it. And uh, anyways, hopefully you'll learn. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy 